Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. So we're in November. Yes, it's November. So I thought I'd do a video here just to show you some of the movies that I've got in my DVD collection that are film noir. Now, let me know in the comments because I know a number of these films probably have been updated and reissued and put into lavish box sets. Uh, so for example, I've been looking the last few days at the Indicator sale uh, and they certainly have some really lovely box sets uh, from Columbia and Universal. Now, some of those films I do have uh, in my collection on DVD, but yeah, absolutely, it would be nice to have those box sets as well. Anyway, let me know in the comments if you're aware of these films being included on other box sets, not just the indicator ones. First up, just want to briefly mention this one, Dangerous Crossing, that's got Gene Crane, um, who was in Leave Me to Heaven with um, Gene Tierney, and Michael Rennie, uh, who was in The Day the Earth Stood Still. Now, I really love this one. It's directed by Joseph Newman, um, and it's essentially, you've got a, um, a newlywed uh, couple, Jean Crane, with her new husband. They board a ship um, and just after departing, um, she goes to meet her new husband in the ship's bar, but he doesn't show up. And then when she goes back to her cabin, um, she finds that uh, everyone starts saying that they don't remember her coming on board with her husband and her room is not her room uh, only her luggage is there etc etc and so we then get into this whole kind of psychological madness about you know whether she's mad or imagining all of this when everyone is speaking against her or is there some sinister plot going on now it's quite a silly one i suppose but uh, i absolutely love this it's so atmospheric um, now they filmed this using the same sets that had been used in the 1953 film titanic that starred uh, barbara stanwyck and um what's his name clifton webb um, as well as being used in gentlemen prefer blondes and i just think that's really fantastic when you get to look at a film that's using those same sets and you imagine gentlemen prefer blondes really colorful film um titanic a very sort of factual point of view kind of film and yet they managed to get such a different atmosphere here in dangerous crossing so using lots of fog machines when we're out on deck um, and this great use of the uh, ship's foghorn as well. I think someone on IMDb actually commented that it was used 107 times in the film. Um, but yeah, it's just so, so atmospheric, this film. Um, I really, really enjoy it. Uh, Dangerous Crossing, thoroughly recommend it. Now, as I said, Jean Crane was in uh, Leave Her to Heaven, which also starred Jean Tierney. Now, Jean Tierney is big in film noir, and perhaps most people will know her for being in this one, Laura, that was uh, with Dana Andrews. But then there's also her reuniting with Dana Andrews in Where the Sidewalk Ends. And I watched this one again just the other night, Whirlpool, and this is a lot of fun as well. Uh, really good for having really Jose Ferre's, uh, one of his very first performances, and he's absolutely fantastic in this. Um, and this is really a, a sort of mind control film noir uh, where we have Gene Tierney as a wife to a successful um, psychoanalyst um, and she's actually a kleptomaniac and uh, so she finds herself in the middle of being sort of questioned by her psychoanalyst husband and Jose Ferre who's a hypnotist um, and uh, he might be just after their wealth and money um, but yeah this is a lot of fun uh, to watch Whirlpool thoroughly recommend it okay and we've got Kiss of Death here with Victor Mature no Way Out with Richard Widmark and uh, Sidney Poitier in this one. Dana Andrews in While the City Sleeps uh, also features Ida Lupino. Uh, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall in Dark Passage. Edward G. Robinson and Susan Hayward in House of Strangers. Now here I've got a box set of some Columbia film noirs. Now I know that uh, I think all of these actually are included on the various indicator box sets, um, but they're not all on the same set. I think they're spread out amongst a few, but uh, um, uh, good friend Jamie at Muckman Movies, uh, he was asking for some recommendations the other day. I, I don't really mean to give recommendations, but I just said to him that these were the ones that I was familiar with that were included on those indicator box sets. So we've got here, the Sniper, The Big Heat, uh, Murder by Contract, The Lineup, um, and Five Against the House. And there we have there just uh, Glenn Ford in The Big Heat. 
And then sticking with those indicator sets for a moment, I know that there's two films that are included on those that are directed by Phil Carlson, uh, 7-Eleven Ocean Drive and Tight Spot. Uh, but he also did this one, Kansas City Confidential. Really recommend this one. Good fun. We've got Clash by Night here with Barbara Stanwyck. And then we've got three here uh, that star Richard Widmark, and they all have street in the title, and they all have the same cinematographer as well. Uh, so we've got the Samuel Fuller pickup on South Street, which is on the Criterion Collection. Uh, Panic in the Streets, and this one uh, definitely became uh, a lot more noteworthy during COVID because this is a film noir that's uh, centred around a, a plague, an epidemic uh, that's uh, sweeping the city. And you've got a great performance in this one from Jack Palance. And then slightly lesser known, but this one, The Street With No Name, I absolutely love this. You've got uh, Richard Widmark in this one as a crime boss and uh, the FBI are trying to infiltrate his gang and uh, he gets a tip off that um, there is an intruder in the gang. But yeah, all three of these are great movies. You've got Pick Up on South Street, directed by Samuel Fuller, um, Panic in the Streets by Elia Kazan, and The Street with No Name by William Keithley. Uh, but all of these have the same cinematographer, Joseph MacDonald, as well. So I think that's quite an interesting link. And just a few classics that I'm sure everybody knows. We have Roman Polanski's Chinatown with Jack Nicholson. Billy Wilder's fantastic double indemnity with Fred McMurray and Barbara Stanwyck. Humphrey Bogart in The Maltese Falcon. And Lana Turner and John Garfield in The Postman Always Rings Twice. And Dana Andrews again in Fallen Angel. Fred McMurray and Joan Crawford in Above Suspicion. A double bill here. We've got Van Heflin and Robert Ryan in Act of Violence. And Ricardo Montalban in Mystery Street. And then a Coen Brothers film uh, that perhaps doesn't get as much mention as some of the other ones, but I absolutely love this. We've got uh, Billy Bob Thornton here in The Man Who Wasn't There and fantastic black and white cinematography from Roger Deakins. And then we've got this one, which is perhaps one of my favourites. Uh, this is The Setup, starring Robert Ryan as a boxer. Lots of criminal goings on in the boxing ring um, and him being forced to take a dive. Um, yeah, really, really thrilling stuff directed by Robert Wise. And then Hammer Films, they've put out a whole series of uh, British film noir. Uh, none of these are particularly great, but uh, it's still interesting to watch them. The Glass Tomb and Paid to Kill. The Unholy Four and A Race for Life. A Race for Life is kind of interesting in that uh, it features a lot of uh, British racing car drivers, including Sterling Moss. A number of different ones on this set, including Man Bait and Stolen Face. And then I just want to talk about this one, The Deadly Game. Um, I watched this just the other day. Nothing particularly special, but there are some interesting things about it. Now, the film itself involves Lloyd Bridges uh, in quite a fun role. Basically, he just plays this guy who turns up in Spain, I think it is, and meets an old war buddy. Um, and within minutes, uh, the uh, buddy is saying that he's got to urgently go back to London. Um, he's got to fly back and can Lloyd Bridges drive his car back uh, and bring with him an envelope that's in the hotel safe and it turns out that envelope uh, contains some important microfilm that people want to get their hands on. Um, it's all a bit ludicrous, but um, what's significant with this film is that it features an actress here. Uh, her name is Simone Silva. This was actually her last credited film role. Um, and uh, really tragic things about this actress. She died when she was only 29. Um, now, she was an Egyptian-born actress uh, who had a few film roles, I think, in the British film industry. She couldn't get her visa for being in American films. Um, and she really craved the limelight. She really wanted to be famous. Um, you know, obviously in the 50s, that time of Marilyn Monroe emerging and uh, you know, that kind of thing. So she wanted to kind of follow in those kinds of footsteps. Um, but she really wasn't getting the attention. And then she had the unfortunate episode of going to the Cannes Film Festival in 1954 and she thought it would be a good idea to take her top off um, and loads of photographers clamoured round to get shots of her. She had Robert Mitchum standing behind her um, and rather than it go her way uh, she was actually asked to leave the Cannes Film Festival and uh, yeah film roles really weren't coming her way much after that episode either um, and uh, she had 
intricate issues involving her body image and she was going on crash diets uh, and things like that to try and uh, keep herself looking youthful and beautiful. And it seems that tragically she died at only the age of 29 uh, relating to her dieting. So there you go, perhaps not the happiest note to end things on, but I just wanted to sort of mention that, I suppose, as an example of how you can have films where they might not be uh, absolute classics by their own right, and yet there's always interesting things to dig into about the making of the film and who's involved. Um, so yeah, just do your own research on movies and see uh, what it is that interests you. Uh OK, but just to end things on a lighter note, hopefully, um, I like linking movies together. So uh, what I mean by that is um, when I watched The Deadly Game and I wanted to see a little bit more of what Simone Silver was like, I then found a film called Escape by Night and I watched that. Uh, again, not a particularly remarkable film. Um, it does, however, feature Connor Boliano, and I've talked about him before on my channel in the film Pool of London. Um, and the film also coasts stars Sidney James uh, who's famous for the Carry On movies but uh, in this film Escape by Night is playing an Italian gangster quite amusing to see but the reason I'm mentioning uh, both Escape by Night and The Deadly Game is that in The Deadly Game uh, one of the co-stars there is Finley Curry and with Escape by Night the cinematographer on that is a guy called Monty Berman so the next coincidence is that I was watching YouTube. There's a couple of channels that I enjoy watching. Roger Kirby is one, and then Solitary Ronin Films and Nazarin Prod. They join together uh, and do a channel as well where they talk about movies. And they happen to both be talking on the same day about the Michael Powell film from 1937 called The Edge of the World. Now, that happens to feature Finlay Curry in the cast, and it has Monty Berman as one of the camera operators. So, great. I then watched that movie on Canopy, um, and wow, it's an absolutely stunning film. Uh, definitely, uh, I recommend it. It's gone straight away into my list of favourite movies. Um, it's a glorious restoration that has been done on that film, um, and it's just absolutely stunning to look at. Michael Powell, obviously, uh, part of... Powell and Pressburger, but this film was one of Michael Powell's first feature films and one of her, the films that really uh, felt like a feature film to him. Um, but it's absolutely gorgeous and stunning to look at, all filmed on this island of Fula uh, in the Hebrides. Um, and uh, it features basically a cast of characters who are coming to terms with uh, basically the end of a way of life. You know, they're living in this remote location where they can have difficulty sort of growing crops and they uh, rear sheep. Um, but there isn't much of a sort of community or support system for them. So um yeah it's time to sort of consider moving to the mainland but yeah it's a really really sort of poetic kind of film but just absolutely stunning to look at uh, because the location of Fula is just magnificent you've got these really craggy rocky escarpments and cliffs and the cast themselves do these extraordinary climbs of these um, sheer rock faces which is just um, incredible to see um, so you've got this amazing cinematography because of these uh, uh, incredible landscape um, but also just such a poetic vision that Michael Powell has in telling this fairly slight story uh, but he uses this magnificent use of dissolves uh, for characters when they're sort of remembering things or thinking of certain events that may occur beautiful beautiful uh, to look at um, so yeah that's the positive note to end things on um, I, I like uh, film journeys and finding films in different ways uh, so that's how I came to the edge of the world um, so yeah definitely I recommend that film if you get the chance to see it um, anyway I've waffled on for quite enough by now so I'll end things here uh, but yeah please do come back and join me for some more videos I'm sure I've got lots more I can waffle on about okay all the best to you bye bye